What's good, y'all? Your boy Ross back out again with another video. So we got to talk about what happened on this episode of Friday Night Smackdown. This was a good episode. I enjoyed the fallout from what took place at Bad Blood. And we got a lot of things that are going to be potentially culminating or, you know, starting to uh, take place, take form and shape at Crown Jewel, which is in a few weeks. So we started off the show with Jimmy. Jimmy uh, Uso made his return back to SmackDown. It's been six months. I haven't even realized it. Time has flown by, but it's essentially been six months since he's been on WWE television. I want to say he got written off WWE television um, the day after WrestleMania. Well, that well, not the day after, but that uh, that Friday after uh, WrestleMania, uh, that's when he got attacked, and he's been off television for pretty much a majority of the year. So he got a really good uh, uh, pop, really good uh, ovation to having him back. I thought that was definitely cool. Just seeing his character progression, how he was kind of getting booed. He was the joke of the bloodline. And the fact that they actually, you know, brought him back in the crowd. It's happy to see him back. Got a good reaction. I thought that was tough, man. So Jimmy's out there and, uh, you know, he, he basically starts talking about, you know, how he it feels good to be back. He's been gone for so long and, you know, he ended up getting taken out by his um by his uh younger brother in solo and you know he he felt some type of way and and he was gonna pretty much address that tonight because they uh they planned on having a one-on-one -on -one match in the main event he said i'm gonna kick your ass bro like just like i used to do as a kid uh tonight i'm gonna get my revenge and then roman comes out roman comes out there Obviously, Roman having the aura over 9,000. Roman comes out there, crowd chanting OTC, gets in the ring, and he does what he normally does with Paul Heyman. He asks for the microphone. He gets the microphone, and, you know, crowd's embracing him. And he does something different. He does something different that he's never really done. He's like, tonight, we're going to do something different. You know, I want y'all to acknowledge Jim. <laughs> he called him Jim, but basically he wanted them to, instead of acknowledging him, he wanted them to acknowledge Jimmy. And I thought that was cool to see. We've never seen Roman essentially give someone else the props. We've never seen that. And I thought that was a, a pretty cool moment. Everybody was acknowledging Jimmy Uso and even Jimmy hit the, the you know, asking for the mic back and he, and Roman's like, I don't know about that. So Roman comes out there and he he basically like, look, man, you know, things uh you know aren't what they used to be. I'm not liking it. You know, when we was running things, we took whatever we wanted to take. And at this point, Roman started flexing, like, man, we had money for day. Well, we just had money out the wazoo. Like, I remember you asking about getting the house. I was like, man, pick whatever house you want. We the money was flowing. We had everything, you know, and we took wherever we want it but then jimmy started to make the point but that's the thing oos that's not the case no more we don't have everything and we can't do this by ourselves and then he started to alluding that they're gonna need help and you could hear the crowd chanting yeet obviously he was talking about jay and he made a very great point we don't have anything we need help. We can't do this by ourselves, you know. And when the crowd's chanting, he, he's he's kind of like you know leaning towards it. Roman says no yeet, and once again, you know, Roman was saying no yeet before all this was happening, and he's still on that, which I like. It's a slow burn. Of course, he shouldn't be you know just too quick to you know try to ask for jay's help you know the ego in roman it's not going to want to do that and i do think jay's not going to be so quick to want to jump back into the bloodline uh ranks so i, I like how they're going to play that up it's going to take some time but eventually jay will you know cross over and help them out once again but right now roman's like nah no yeet now nah, we'll we'll figure it out and i like what jimmy said he said you're 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 a tribal chief with no tribe. I'm the only one 
that acknowledges you anymore. I'm the only one. And he walked out and, and Roman had to think about that. No one else acknowledges him. There's no Paul Hammond. There's no wise man. It's just Roman and Jimmy. That's it. And it played into how things will ultimately play ultimately play out later on in the main, main event between Jimmy and uh, Solo. But I like the opening segment because it, it basically reinforces Roman and Jimmy can't get the job done by themselves. They're not going to be able to get the job done by themselves. And we see how that plays out. <laughs> so we uh, had a, a, a tag, uh, a women's tag team championship match on the line between Lash Legend and uh, Jakara, uh, Jakara uh, Jackson versus uh, Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair. So as Lash Legend and Jakara is walking out there, Kevin Owens comes through the crowd, grabs a microphone, interrupts the whole situation, and he's on the microphone saying, you know, basically, you know, calling out Cody like, you want to know why I did that? Y'all y'all think I just did that just because? No, Cody betrayed me. They cut out his mic. So he goes to the announce booth, announcement table, and he gets the headset, and he starts talking on the headset. Y'all want to talk about me turning on Cody? No, Cody betrayed me. Cody betrayed me, and then before he can really get into it, that's when Cody said, hey, bro. I ain't got time for all that talking. Let's get to fighting, which I can appreciate. And I like the fact that Kevin Owens is, his mind has been, I guess you can say, warped in a way in feeling that Cody is the one that ultimately betrayed Kevin Owens because he sided with Roman Reigns. And I mean, it makes sense. Roman and K uh, KO have been had some legendary feuds and, and issues because of the bloodline. So to see one of your friends help out the guy that's been causing you hell for like three years, I can understand. So I love how angry he was. Like, y'all say I turned on Cody. No, Cody turned on me. So now KO is ready to fight. Cody Rose is ready to fight, but the security is breaking up everything. He wasn't supposed to be there, Kevin Owens. This was really good. Then Randy comes out there to try to calm down Kevin Owens. Randy's the one trying to, uh, not trying to calm down Kevin Owens. He's trying to calm down Cody. Then he goes to the ring. He tries to get KO to calm down, but KO wants to get his hands on Cody Rhodes. He ends up elbowing Randy Orton and obviously Randy Orton just got elbowed in the face so he turns him around and punches Kevin Owens in the face Kevin Owens is shocked he can't believe what just happened and this was a good segment it, it gave that it wasn't planned vibe it was really good they cut off his mic when he was about to address Cody and how he felt about him like this was really really good the story is ramping up even more and I love it so they, they cut to the, there's like a segment backstage where Cody is basically, he still wants to get his hands on Kevin Owens. And he, you know, Nick Aldis and Randy is, you know, essentially trying to calm him down, get him on the bus to get him out of here. Randy's like, yo, get out of here, bro. You don't, uh, I'll deal with Kevin, get out of here. And Nick Aldis is like, look, you don't need to worry about Kevin. We'll take care of Kevin. I need you to focus on Gunther. This the, you are SmackDown's top champion. Raw has Gunther as their top champion. I need you to focus in on that match and beat him. This is very important for the SmackDown brand, which would make sense. So they want him to focus on that. And and Randy, you know, and um, Randy is like, you know, I got you, bro. I'm going to talk to KO. But Cody's like pissed, which he should be. I like that. Good. So he gets on the bus and it's implied that he ended up leaving the arena and randy was gonna go talk to kevin owens so later on in the show naya comes out there with uh tiffany stratton and naya basically said you know bailey was a really good uh opponent really good competitor but just like all the other great competitors they all got squashed by me and then she started talking about uh you know live basically like live I'm going to do the same thing to you. I'm going to squash you and destroy you at Crown Jewel. And then things got interesting because then all of a sudden, uh, Naya ends up grabbing Tiffany by her head, like really aggressively. 
like grabbing her by the head and and Tiffany, what I need you to do after I beat her, after I beat Liv, you can cash in your money in the bank on Liv. And you can see T Tiffany like kind of shaking her head. But the way they set this up, Nia's going to get cashed in on. It's going to be her. The way she's kind of being mean and and, and kind of really, really being kind of like of a bully to to Tiffany. Like, hey, bro, like that whole head grabbing segment, that was kind of aggressive as hell. Like we in a boxing, you do that to me. So I, they're planting the seeds for that for sure. But basically she wants Tiffany after she faces Liv to cash in on Liv Morgan. So uh, Naomi comes out there and Naomi's talking her trash. She's like, hey. Let's have a one-on-one -on -one right now. Let's run it. I'm, I'm ready to fight you right now. I don't need no help. And then that's when, uh, that's when, uh, Liv, Dominic, and Raquel come out there. And, you know, Liv comes out there saying, look, we, we was going to come out here and, and, uh, you know, pretty much beat you up. But seems like you already are preoccupied and you have a match. So we're going to sit by ringside. And watch you lose. So, after that happened, they, we have the match. Match is going on. You have uh, Dominic, Raquel, and Liv all sitting by the announcer's table. And towards the end of the match, uh, it looks like uh, Tiffany is trying to uh, attack um, Naomi with the briefcase. But then Raquel gets the briefcase, takes the briefcase from Tiffany Stratton. Naomi ends up kicking her, getting her back into, getting back into the ring. And then as they, uh, I want to say Liv, no, I, uh, it's actually uh, Nia Jax is at the top rope. That's when Liv comes over there and hits uh, Naomi with the briefcase, which causes, um, Naomi to essentially hit her with like a modified power bomb, and she ended up getting the pin and pinned Nia Jax, the, the champion, with the assist of Liv Morgan, which is crazy when you think about it. So they essentially cost Nia, uh, Nia the match, match and I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be some type of implication. She pinned the champion, so she may get a, a championship match opportunity or one on one. So we'll see when. That actually does happen. So, obviously, she got screwed over. And you see Liv, Raquel, and Dominic. They're pretty much, you know, walking up the ramp. You know, happy with what they've done. Rhea music hit. Rhea attacks uh, Raquel. Then she goes after Liv and throws her into the ring. And she throws her right to uh, Nia Jax. But then... Uh, Rhea gets in the ring and gives a boot <laughs> to Nia Jax and trying to get her hands on uh, Liv Morgan. But then Dominic is able to essentially distract her uh, for a little bit for them to get out of Dodge. But ultimately, Rhea has made it very clear she is not done with them and she's going to get her hands on Liv Morgan one way or another. So we'll see how that plays out. But um yeah, I do think we're going to get a cash in at Crown Jewel. And I think Nia is going to be the one to get cashed in on. So, in a uh, later part of the show, the Street Profits and DIY are arguing backstage on getting another tag team title opportunity. Nick Aldis is like, look, you guys had your opportunity, but y'all lost. And I have a new tag team on the way to SmackDown next week. So, I don't know what to tell you. They start arguing back and forth. Nick Aldis hears something or sees something. He runs out of out of the shot. The camera's following him. And you see, once again, Kevin Owens in his natural habitat beating somebody up in the parking lot. It was like the ramp area leading to the tour buses and stuff. And Kevin Owens was stomping a mud hole in Randy Orton. And you can hear Kevin Owens saying, you sided with him. You sided with the enemy. Like, Kevin Owens has lost it. His hatred for the bloodline has run so much, now he's losing his friends. And best believe, Randy Orton, 
the Viper that we know, he's not going to let that slide. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens next week. I do think Randy Orton is going to want to get his revenge or maybe he going to want to put some hands to KO. But I love what they're doing, KO. KO's heel turn is technically justified. It's, it's one of those things where it makes sense. His heel turn makes sense. The bloodline has screwed him over so many times. He hates these guys. And anybody that supports them or do anything to help them, you're an enemy to him, which I can appreciate and I fucks with. So it's just the way he's going about it. I love that. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out next week. But Kevin Owens in his natural habitat attacking someone, attacking someone in the parking lot. And then we get to the main event, Jimmy versus uh solo and really this was jimmy had a few uh bits and pieces of offense but he was by himself what you expect you got the tongans and jacob fatu surrounding the ring he that, there was nothing he could do jimmy he essentially was in like a a 1v uh a 1v4 essentially that's literally what it was he had a little bit of offense but there was nothing he could do and you can see uh, solo kind of falling in Roman's footsteps. He was talking his trash. He's like, this is my new bloodline. This is what I created. Y'all acknowledge me. You, This is all you got. He's talking trash like Roman used to talk trash to his opponents. When he had the bloodline, he had people in his corner behind him to help him. And ultimately in this situation, the numbers game was too much. And he won. Solo got the win. He needed a win here. Uh, Solo got the win over Jimmy with the Samoan spike. And then after the match, they proceed to beat up Jimmy. Roman comes out there. Roman comes out there. No weapon. Just him by himself. He gives a couple Superman punches on people as he's walking to the ring. But once again, the numbers game ends up affecting them. And even he falls to it. Jacob Fatu does the, the situation when he runs to the other uh, ring turnbuckle and it's kind of like that hip attack. You know, he just pretty much throws his his, his body weight and his speed right to your head as you're sitting in the turn uh, in the corner of the ring by the turnbuckles. Brutal spot. And then Jimmy tried to get involved to help, but there was only so much he can do. He ended up eating that uh, beautiful springboard moonsault that uh, Jacob does. He ends up eating that uh from jacob five two i mean there was not not much jimmy could do there and then they hold up roman and solo ends up hitting him with a samoan spike as they hold roman up to you know receive the samoan spike for so uh samoan spike from solo and the show ends with them jimmy and roman at the mercy of the new bloodline still and as the blue bloodline leaves out you can hear Jimmy say, hey, bro, we're going to need help. You see? This is what I, I said, what I was talking about. We can't do this alone. We're going to need help. And that was the theme for the bloodline in relation to Jimmy and Roman. Needing help. It came full circle. He talked about it at the beginning of the show. And as you see, they needed help. They got beat up. There was nothing they can do. It's a 2v4 situation. Cody's not going to always be involved. They don't have no other friends on the roster. They're going to need help. So the question is, when do they try to get Jay involved? And if they even and even after Jay, they're still going to need one other person. Most likely it may be Sammy. We'll see. We'll see how that plays out, how the story is going to play out to get that to happen. Either way, I definitely enjoyed this SmackDown. Fun episode. Great stuff. I like the fact that we see some Monday Night Raw stars there, you know, on the show as well, you know, kind of spicing things up. But comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy this episode of SmackDown? If you did, let me know down below. But I appreciate all love support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.